A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bimadadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Rasulul Kareem, the Khabib al-Azim Wa ana abdika al-ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Alhamdulillah Wana atikul ajeezu da'eefu miskeenu, zalim ya Rabb Alhamdulillah as a reminder always from myself is that we are an energy being and when we take out the world of faith and our practices are only to the level of what people understand of Islam but they no longer incorporate faith and iman and iman was about belief. Amantu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi to, to believe in Allah to believe in the angels, to believe in the books, to believe in destiny good and bad and to believe in, in day of judgment means belief and belief is not tangible as far as Islam is tangible that you pray, you can see that you're praying, you wash and you understand that you're washing and then you give and you go for hajj and those are actions that you can see and faith are actions that are from the unseen that your heart has to have a belief in. When belief goes and a nation is, is focused only on rituals and they don't remember anymore this world of light then everything seems to be ajeeb or bizarre. The immense power of energy and our energy being and that's important in the sunnah and everything that Allah gives to us. Everything is alive, everything has a zikr from Allah So when Sayyidina Muhammad was fasting and in the difficulty of fasting there are many hadiths in which Prophet would put a stone and a series of stones upon his belly and that was to alleviate the air, to alleviate the pain but also an immense reality that everything that Allah creates and created has a zikr, has an energy, has a reality. And it's important to remember those realities. If we don't remember the reality then we don't understand what was happening in them. When we kiss Hajj al-Aswad is a stone from paradise and that stone was a red ruby that represented an angel. And that angel in its however Allah wants to do His creation that that red ruby represents an angel and that angel is to take account of all who come for the hajj and all who make their tawaf. And there was an immense reality from paradise that Allah was sending. So we're now going to lay the theme of inanimate objects having immense realities where people when they lose their faith they become a nation of rituals. They do certain things, they don't know why they're doing them anymore but that's just the way their fathers did it and they're carrying on the tradition of their forefathers. But the way of faith has an immense reality. So when you're kissing Hajj al-Aswat, making tawaf around the Kaaba, Allah has a representation from paradise at that location to take account. Forget about now the reality behind the Kaaba and the souls that are inside the Kaaba, all those are teachings from Malakut. Then the, the concept of rocks and mountains and their reality and that every rock has a zikr. And when Allah in Holy Qur'an was describing people whose hearts are locked and darkened, He described them that your hearts are like rocks. And then Allah clarified, no not like rocks because rocks even waters gush forth from them. To draw our attention that the stone has an immense reality. 
and there are some stones in which waters and oceans will be flowing from them. Nabi Musa came upon the rock, was ordered by Allah to strike the rock and 12 springs gushed forward for his tribes. What type of secret did that rock have? How Allah preserved water within that reality? Everything has a zikr, what that zikr is and its importance for humanity. So there's not a sickness that Allah didn't create its cure and the tariqahs they hold to that reality. But even within the tariqah there are people whom their level of, of, of energy and malakut may not be there and as a result they say, well, these things are not significant. But they are significant, there are immense articles on the sunnah of the ring, on the sunnah of the different rings and the different stones and their importance. The sunnah of just the hand is of an immense reality, that if the hand is a, is a coded creation from Allah there are 15 lines that separate on the finger. What's the code for this 15? Why Allah made those lines? Why the hand is with a 1 and a, and a upside down V for 8? That the right hand has a coding of 81 and 18, the other hand is the, the symmetry of that, there's the 8 and the 1 and this is the 1 and the 8. That why Allah made all these codings? What is the significance of the pinky finger which has to do with a, a reality? What is the significance of the thumb and its reality attached to our identity? And that this index finger that is connected from the world of light what we call the shahada finger. That when we put this finger out from the world of light that Allah has bestowed upon the reality of the souls. There's a light that emanates from this finger. When this finger is in connection with your scan of who your identity when Allah describes, we'll raise them back to their very thumb and the print with on that thumb, Allah will replicate, will replicate insan to the degree of replicating the exact fingerprint. That why? Because every human has their own unique fingerprint. And that when this index finger touches the thumb, the light of your reality will be called forth. The light that you don't need on a daily basis, when you put this finger it's bringing out a light. When this finger scans the identity it brings our reality and call it to be present for the physicality. The pinky finger has in spirituality the representation of, of knowledge. So that what represents this finger has to do with the realities of what Allah is going to bestow of heavenly knowledges. This finger in which is the ring finger is the finger of allegiance. That your allegiance on what you believe in and what you are adhering to and that was the reason why this is the sunnah finger because this is an allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad that when we place the finger upon the, the ring upon this finger, this is our allegiance to Sayyidina Muhammad That we take a vow, Ya Rabbi that grant me the, the noble sunnah to carry this sunnah and that my allegiance is to Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of activating the sunnah and activating that reality, has an immense importance, has an immense importance. We say that when Allah wanted to give the kingdom to Sayyidina Sulaiman because Allah works through cause and effect, that there's an Im Im immense importance that He wants a Prophet of Allah who's begging for a kingdom like no other kingdom, that I'm poorer than the people who come to ask help from me and I'm surrounded by all sorts of difficulty, Ya Rabbi grant me this kingdom that you have not granted to anyone before. Why Allah then just didn't say, okay you have the kingdom, it's yours. Because Allah wants as cause and effect that the servant must take an action and Allah provides the reaction. 
این فتن که فتن رو بیا یا وحب یا وحب یا وحب یا مصبب الاسباب یا مفتح ابواب that a cause a condition for the servant that he's in need and as a result he prays out and calls out and Allah gives something as a reward to the servant as a result of what Allah has bestowed upon that servant many doors of reality opened upon Sayyidina Sulaiman So means the ring and because the ultimate Messenger of Allah and that was from the dalil of Isra wal Miraj that Allah called all the Prophets and said, Go now for your Isra into Jerusalem, all the Prophets will be gathered there to show your superiority and that they pray behind you, Sayyidina Muhammad. That's why then the Sunnah and the only Sunnah is the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad. That's how we know that the ring came from Prophet If you know that the ultimate Prophet, the one with all authority is Sayyidina Muhammad and he told Jafar that, I was a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water, means this station of Risalat and Nubuwwat is an eternal station. So the only Sunnah for Allah is the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad so when Allah wants to give this power to a Prophet, He wants him to be humbled that, I'm giving this via a ring. Allah doesn't need to have a ring, He can just say, it's yours. But He wants to humble the Prophet of Allah so that in the heart of that servant knows that, whose ring was that? Where did a ring come from that had all this immense power? You see how that now it humbles the servant? Because he wants all of these Prophets to seek out who's the real Prophet. You're just an agent. If you're getting a ring that has power to move heavens and earth, jinn and malaika means the shaitan were under the control of the one who holds that ring. So where did this ring come from? That was the important that Sayyidina Sulaiman like Nabi Musa was talking and he realized he's not talking to Allah let me now see you, let me see this magnificent and beautific one that I'm talking to and say, Naysa that I don't want to die to see you, raise me and let me come back in, into your nation. Means every Prophet of Allah understood and Allah by means worked to humble Sayyidina Sulaiman Imagine if that ring has power, imagine who's the owner of that ring. That's what you should be more astonished about. So means the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad has an immense and majestic reality. So means when we're energy being we understand one first is that with this magnificence Ya Rabbi grant us from the reality of the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad that make it a nijad and a means in which to open many doors of power, many doors of reality, many doors of safety in an unsafe time. When we believe that then we're asking, Ya Rabbi grant us from the authority of the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Then when they train us and teach us that everything has a zikr of Allah and do we understand its zikr, Allah says, no one knows it but the people of tafakkur because they're in a continuous state of contemplation and asking, Ya Rabbi grant us from these knowledges. That everything has a zikr, what's the benefit of this creation for my reality? And they understood, when the servant of Allah wears aqeeq, the aqeeq is a stone in which has an immense warmth. It's a zikr from Allah So when, when a person is not trained in malakut they say, oh there's nothing that helps you but Allah. So they're, they're using Allah against Allah. And that's where the danger of ignorance comes in, the, in Islam in the last days. Nothing helps you but Allah. What kind of a statement is that? Because Allah created everything as a help and everything as a zikr. So the first thing you have to ask is, didn't Allah say that everything has a zikr? Allah doesn't create anything in waste. Allah didn't adorn this earth as an entertainment. And He didn't put the stones here as an entertainment. He didn't put the water here as an entertainment, 
He didn't put every single flower and every single creation, it's like an unbroken chain. You know if you take out the smallest elements of this creation, the largest elements will die of starvation. The entire food chain of the ocean is based on the microbes at the sea, at the, at the lowest level of the sea. Nothing is in waste, Allah's immense architectural or building of the architect of this creation is not something small that you downplay and say, no it's, it's a stone don't worry about it rely only on Allah. If Allah created that stone it must have a zikr and what was the purpose of that zikr and what was its reality? When the servant understands and regains their consciousness and wakes from the heedlessness of shaitan they understand that Allah has already given us everything and it's all in the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad So make reference to and research, what's the sunnah of the rings? What's the sunnah and the reality that all the imams taught? Imam Jafar said that entire book on the realities of the different rings and the different stones, their zikr and their reality for your being. What are the hadiths of Sayyidina Muhammad in reality to stones, rocks and their zikr? And never think that these things are, oh these are nothing and rely on Allah. It is Allah that made these and when you love and appreciate Allah because the seeker is one whom is continuously looking. And Allah wants us to seek and say, are you overlooking my creation? I spent a time, I spent a reality because Allah has no time but I, I beautified your earth and put these beatific ornaments, do you understand them or you just pass them by as if you're busy in life and you don't really care about anything? And that's where the badness comes and the bad character. When we stop to smell the fragrance and the beauty of what Allah has created like our predecessors before, that's why they established so many realities, they had the ability to stop, their life slow down. And say, Ya Rabbi you created me and you created this beautiful river and in this river I see these stones and my goodness you know that water has, Allah describes that I, I, I put my throne upon the water. That what type of power and might Allah is describing upon my where meem and alif, my is a meem and an alif and Allah said, I put my throne upon the water. So when they would look at the rivers flowing they understood there's an immense power on this river flowing. And then you look to the river rock, was a little rock that are filling the bottom of these rivers. What type of honour Allah gave to those rocks that all day long they're in the flowing of water that Allah described, I put my throne upon that water. What type of zikr these rocks have that creep, that keep that secret and that power of that zikr that's flowing, it's immense, immense realities all around us. So what is the firuz and the turquoise ring, what does it have that keeps away sickness, keeps away every type of difficulty and how it absorbs the nazar of people, it calls the eye of people with an energy to pull to it, that don't look at this servant, look at me. And as a result of looking at me, your bad energy will go into the ring and not onto the servant. What Allah created of a zikr for firuz that it has that ability to take away difficulty? What type of zikr has an aqeeq that warms the heart and, and makes the heart with its zikr to feel the warmth and the love of Allah as a stone in which to open the reality of the heart and the softness of the heart? Even the crystals because Allah created these, not, we're not talking about manufactured by human beings in, in, in places with using resin and these things. But the stones and crystals that Allah has created they have a zikr and their zikr are for the benefit of humanity, some are heated and some are cool depending upon the research that one does and connecting with their heart. The, the, the rose quartz has an immense warmth, it has a very powerful zikr within it 
Anyone whom trying to meditate and the dunya has distracted them and they're not able to feel the warmth within their own heart when they meditate they should be holding a rose quartz. And by holding the rose quartz, worshipness is only for Allah so don't, don't send any weird emails that you're telling us is shirk and we're worship. It is, we just gave this whole definition that you cannot have a shirk because it's Allah's giving that stone a zikr, this is Allah's creation. When that rose quartz has a zikr and it's a heated zikr and the servant just holds and meditates and makes a zikr of Allah and feels now the warmth that developing within their heart and begin just to hold it, Ya Rabbi as you gave this rock a more powerful zikr that let that zikr of that rock to warm me and to open my realities. For everything from you is, a, is in a continuous praising and has no nafs and has no ego and has an immense life force. And when we've taught about energies we've said before that if you hold just a phone near your heart and put your hand out, anybody can push your hand down because your entire energy field is depleted by anything that is created. Because this created energy is meant to interfere with your energy field. If you hold this by your heart and put your hand and tell your friend that, push my hand down, in an instant with their finger they bring your hand depleted and destroyed by these devices. We use these for whatever Allah wants us to use them for. But this is now in the comparison that when you don't have that and you have something from Allah even just a fruit, when an orange or an apple that has a, a life force from the seeds in which Allah will make from one seed an entire tree to appear with hundreds of fruits and thousands of fruits over its lifetime, imagine what type of qudra and power that has. And you put something from Allah hold it on your heart and now see if anyone can move your hand. The, the shield and the force of the energy of that creation from Allah will support you in your energy field. And that's when Allah is giving us an understanding of, you are, you are my chosen creation. This earth and this everything upon it is meant to be of service to you. If you're in need of energy then understand these realities. When you fortify yourself with these realities of course they lend themselves to have an energy to build you and to dress you and to push and protect you from all sorts of negativities. And this was the way of all the pious predecessors, this was the way of all realities but it became something lost and the people of a external understanding they diminished its importance because they lost faith. So all over the world faith, faith was lost and as a result everybody's practicing hollow practices. And when you try to reintroduce these realities they say, oh we don't know what you're talking about, this, what, what, what is these things and rely only on Allah And the first question is to ask, well didn't Allah make a zikr for all this creation? The rock it doesn't have a zikr. What is its zikr and what is its importance? You don't meditate with a lava rock because lava is coming from an immense fire of a volcano. You don't want that fire upon yourself. So everything has a reality, everything has a, has, a, has a purpose. Now for us is to understand that purpose. As we get closer towards the end of time, more and more of the Muhammadan kingdom and all its realities become known. In a time of great sickness and difficulty, you don't think that every plant and everything that Allah has a voice where it begins to tell the servant of Allah that this is why Allah created me. This is my danger for you if you try to eat me and this is my benefit for you as a healing and a najat. Every creation of Allah will give its purpose, its understanding, its danger and its benefit for insan because they're all created to serve Allah and the greatest service of Allah is to take care of His creation and His chosen creation. Bi Muhammad al-Mustafa Click the link now to subscribe.